conclusion that most people out there, that the left will encourage and the right will not oppose, but that most people out there will conclude from this. Well, you see, you see, you objectivists, you free market types, to get a vaccine, you have to have government. To deal with a pandemic, you have to have government. To deal with pandemic, no, no, you have to have government. You have to violate rights. You have to tax. You have to spend. And then, because you shut down the economy, you have to stimulate the economy. And therefore, you have to have government. And at every level, every level, the conclusion is going to be, see, the pandemic is just proof. And I can see this in debates that I'm going to do in the future. See, the pandemic is just proof that we need more government, not less government. And of course, think of it in terms of the average Joe or Jane or whatever. To them, it's much easier to imagine. It's much easier to see in their imagination how centralized governments can deal with the pandemic because they can look at China, they can look at France, they can look at other countries, and they can see how it was done. But if I want to argue let's say if I'm debating a socialist, if I want to argue, no, 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 the market would have done this a thousand times better. Here's what a rights respecting government would have done. Here's how you would have handled it. And we would have had no loss of liberty. And we would have handled all this much better. <laughs> and we would be richer in the process because the economy would have tumbled a lot less. That's hard to imagine. They've never seen it. And they don't really know what it looks like because how many people out there actually understand how markets work and how many people out there respect markets, admire markets, promote markets. And this is one of my big things about the so-called right. Well, not the so-called, the right. Is they don't do markets good. They condemn markets just as much, almost as much as the left. They don't hail the beauty of the marketplace and how it works and how it provides solutions and how it deals with issues and problems and how it solves, pro it solves those problems. No. Indeed, intellectuals on left and right, politicians of left and right, condemn the market. You saw that with big tech. Condemn the greed, condemn the profit motive and reject the idea that markets could solve problems like the pandemic. So what do you expect from the average person? I don't, you know, they, there's no way. There's no way that people can stand up to their intellectuals and say, no, right? You know. How would they even know that there is a market solution to these things unless they listen to this show? or they follow me on Twitter. So, what we're gonna get is significant increase in, um, in statism. No matter who wins the election, we will get much more government intervention in healthcare as a consequence of COVID, no matter who wins the election. Indeed, this election is um, it, it doesn't matter. What's going on here is inevitable. And unless we get the ideas of freedom, the ideas of markets, the ideas of capitalism, the ideas of individual rights out there, then it's hopeless because the people can't imagine an alternative. The people cannot imagine an alternative. It's only the intellectuals who can provide an alternative. And it's exactly the intellectuals who will not, whether left or right, whether nationalist, conservative, or leftists or centrists who can't imagine an alternative and how markets could solve these kind of problems. I don't know what you, somebody says they don't agree with the scenario I'm portraying. I'm not sure what you disagree with, but the fact is 
that we are heading towards more authoritarianism, more control of healthcare, more control of people's lives, more tracing. Oh, this is the other thing that the conclusion will come to. Well, we need a better way to trace people. We need a better way to see who people met with. We need a better way to track people during a disease. We need better surveillance tools. Those Chinese have it down. Those Chinese know what they're doing. I did a show a while ago. I think the title was, We're All China Now. I think it was Rubio's speech about industrial planning and how you know, we, need a, we need a control economy much more, like the Chinese. I think China's winning. I think the Chinese model of authoritarian government, a, a fascist government, that allows semblance of pre, free, free uh, semblance of private property, semblance of free markets, some incentive to innovate. Oh, but that's what I said. I said government is the salute, is never the answer. It's always the problem. It's exactly what I've said, right? It's not an issue of IQ. Give me a break. <sighs> People always want to boil it down to simple solutions. People are too stupid to understand. No, people can understand if somebody was actually articulating the message. How do you know people are too stupid if they've never heard the message? But my point is, China is winning. People are willing today to trade safety for freedom. People are willing today to trade the knowable for freedom. Why take risk? Why have an uncertain future? It reminds me of, um, of this engineer in China in 2004 when I asked him if he's upset that he couldn't vote, that he didn't have any political freedom. He said, look, as long as, they, as, long as the economy grows every year and my quality of life and standard of living goes up every year, Voting is that, that important to me. Well, I think that's true in the U.S. today. As long as I don't get COVID, as long as you can secure me a minimum wage, as long as maybe we have a universal basic income, as long as you give me the things that I need, as long as you provide me with my health care, who cares about political freedom, free speech, all these abstractions? What have they ever done for me? And that will not be the fault of the common man. That will not be the fault of the so-called people who don't have a high enough IQ, because that's BS. It'll be the fault of our politicians. It'll be the fault of our intellectuals. It'll be the fault of our philosophers, our thinkers, and it'll be your fault to the extent that you don't do what you need to do to give these ideas a hearing. It'll be the fault of anybody who stays silent in front of the growing authoritarianism in this country. It'll be the fault of anybody who does not speak up and yell from the top of the mountains. Now, what is this deal with shoes? For the shoe, shoe fund for the shoe. What is, uh, I don't get it. I'm, I'm missing something. I've missed something in the chat. There's a whole fundraising campaign going on. Happy to support you, Ron Brooks Shoe. I don't get it. What did I say that has prompted a fund to provide me, which I am barefoot. I, I can't show you, I guess, because my feet are way down there. But yes, I am barefoot. But uh, if you buy me shoes, I'm not going to wear shoes. Why would I wear shoes? Was it a typo? Oh, it comes out of a typo. I thought it had to do with the fact that I said in one of the previous shows that I do these shows barefoot in shorts, right? And that I only wear shoes once a week when I go to this one restaurant that requires shoes. Otherwise, I wear sandals. But maybe, okay, I, get, I guess it was just a typo for the show, not the shoe. All right, got it, got it. Sorry. <laughs> My imagination went in all kinds of directions, obviously. All right. But we, we raised some money for the shoes. That's good. And, and these are pretty cheap shoes, so we're probably looking at flip-flops, right? If you want me to buy real shoes, 
you're going to have to put up more money than what you put up so far. The shoes of liberty, I like that. Shoes of liberty, a thousand bucks a piece. That's what's going to be required here if you want real shoes, right? A, a one, a dollar ninety-nine. You know, flip flops. You, you guys are not serious. You, this is this is how freedom decays and how we lose our freedoms and how we go silently into the night because you guys will not put enough money into the shoe fund. So I am, unfortunately, quite pessimistic. I, I am pessimistic about the ability of this country to recover, not from the pandemic. I mean, that's going to be tough enough. Not even from Trump, not from, uh, you know, the bad response to the pandemic. All of this is, I think, is doable. The thing that really scares me about the inability of this country to recover from is the wrong conclusions people are going to come from the pandemic. Right. It's the fact that freedom is going to be the loser. Much scarier. Much, much, much scarier than COVID. Much scarier than Donald Trump is the loss of freedom that we are going to suffer because of the wrong conclusions people come to as a consequence of this pandemic. And uh, it's something to be on the lookout for. It's something to fight against. It's something to be aware of. It's something not to stay silent about. We must keep speaking. Speaking out against statism, about any kind of statist conclusions that people come to as a result of um, <laughs> as a result of this pandemic. Uh, you, you know, I've got a serious topic here, and you guys are making me laugh. So uh, we've got a twenty-five dollar bid now on uh, towards the shoes. I think I what we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be. Any man or woman who is willing to think, meaning any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the role of the collectivist brute. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. It, all it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share, and uh, you can support the show at youronbookshow.com slash support, or on Patreon, or Subscribestar, or Locals, uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value, hopefully, you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if you... Even if you just come here to troll, or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe, because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified. Right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.